Thanks, uh, Duncan. Hello, everyone, once again. Um, so my presentation is going to focus on um, what we did in Zimbabwe um, under the data extractors program, where we trained our local communities uh, to use data and how this enabled them to secure a voice in budget allocations. So the background to this is that um, mainly uh, there's uh, available data that uh, most people, including even the civil, civil society organizations, as well as the communities, they are not utilizing with regards to uh, advocacy for improved transparency and accountability in the management of um, mineral wealth. So these uh, also include the budgets, like we have the local authority budgets, like the road district council budgets, and also financial statements by mining companies. You'll find that um, there are companies that are publicly disclosing, uh, like uh, what Duncan has mentioned earlier on, under the UK um, and also Canada, uh, listing those uh, listed companies. So these, you'd find that most, company, most civil society organizations and uh, communities would not utilize such kind of information, um, which is publicly available. Um, this is what I've just mentioned before, like um, the EU, UK, and Canada mandatory disclosure of payments. And also, um, we also realize that communities, most communities, they do not have um, information about their right to access to information uh, within the communities or the countries that they reside in. And this is mainly also um, with regards to the areas that we are working in. And just also to mention uh, as part of background that the communities that we worked with mainly were within the mining sector. Uh, and these included um, Marange, we also have uh, where Zimplatz is mining in Zimbabwe, where we call Mondorongezi, and also Caledonia, which is in Gwanda, and Unki, which is in Shurugi. Unki is mainly uh, mining platinum, and Zimplatz is also specializing in platinum. Marange is in diamond, and uh, Caledonia it's gold. So what we did um, under the Public Shoshupe uh, Extractors um, program, we trained the communities having realized that we can't only have the civil society organizations as the voice of uh, the communities, but they should also voice up their concerns and also act up on the issues affecting their lives. So we trained the communities, as you can see on that picture, these communities were trained on how to extract uh, already existing and available data uh, using the internet. So what we actually did, I think one challenge also is that most communities, they, are, they reside in the rural areas where um, there isn't much with regards to internet access. So we had to bring them in uh, a local town close to their rural areas, and then in, that's an internet cafe where they were being trained on how to extract data and use the internet, what data can they extract, and how can they analyze that kind of data. So this was done through a training. And um, what we also did was uh, the use of data user story template. Uh, this is one guy with a template that is written a name, uh, his name, and where he is from, and the kind of information that you would want to know. Uh, those who can see it's written, um, I need to know information on taxes being uh, extracted from mines in Shurugi. And uh, what does he want to do with the information so that I can, um, so that I can action uh, in relation to development programs in, uh, in the district. So these are the kind of uh, data templates that we produced and also posted online and uh, even also to the various uh, mining companies operating in the area and also to the relevant government departments in Zimbabwe. So out of this, uh, we realized that uh, as, an, as a result, communities, now that they have understanding of the kind of information that they would want to, that they are supposed to uh, assess and also use for advocacy for change within their lives, they managed to start engaging the various relevant uh, authorities, including government, mining companies, and um, 
they also started to participate in budget formulation processes. You'll find that previously before, communities would shun away from such kind of uh, meetings being called by rural district councils to participate in budgeting processes. And um, you'll find that uh, mining companies, they also pay uh, taxes to uh, the rural district councils within these uh, districts. And um, it's also important for communities to know how much revenue was being paid by the mining companies to these uh, communities, to these, uh, sorry, authorities, and how this has been allocated and used within the, uh, for the benefit of communities, especially for improved uh, social service delivery. So they managed to start participating and actually during the trainings, one of the communities actually acknowledged that we do not participate in this because um, they mainly like to participate where they are being given food aid. But through these trainings, they managed to understand and also realize the importance of participating in such kind of meetings being called by the rural district councils. And um, also the community started to collect data uh, and analyzing it for the use of uh, change, uh, especially um, for improved social service delivery. And they also started doing some social audits you find that companies also, they pay a levy in Zimbabwe to what we call the raw electrification levy to uh, the ZESA, which is the Zimbabwe Electrical Supply Authority in Zimbabwe. And this uh, is also supposed to meant uh, for benefit of the communities, especially in the rural areas uh, with regards to either uh, putting up electricity within the communities or servicing the various... Um, um, it might be hospitals, clinics, schools, where there are, I mean, for electrical facilities, and this money is supposed also to be used for that. But you find that most of them would not even know about such kind of levies being paid to the various authorities and how to really also monitor and track down how these are being used for their own benefits. So you find they also started analyzing this uh, corporate social responsibility budgets by mining companies, and this is just one example of uh, one of the companies, uh, Zimplas, and you find that uh, towards education, sports development, income generating projects, how much they've been contributing. So most of these communities, um, they are really uh, backward with regards to education, infrastructure development, health facilities, and um, it's also disheartening to see that what these companies uh, mainly prioritize with regards to corporate social responsibility is something to do with sports, whereby about a million dollars went towards uh, sporting activities 2017, 2016, and only about 161,000 went towards uh, building uh, or improving education facilities within these communities. So these are the kind of information now that the communities are trying to understand and also breaking down what that kind of information means and how best they can use that information for advocacy. Um, this is also another example of uh, how communities also manage to assess. You find that this is for Zimplats uh, in Zimbabwe, the platinum mining company. I think in blue, you find that 42% went towards procurement costs. And, um, under the Africa Mining Vision, which is one of uh, the initiatives that also try to um, advocate and also uh, uphold the good governance and management of natural resources, it also states that we need to, I mean, mining companies also need to promote uh, local enterprise development, local content development, but it's also disheartening to see that most of their costs uh, goes towards procurement costs, which is also out of the country and leaving out um, the communities who may also be able to supply some of these things that they will be procuring outside, but also even just to train and also improve the skills and capacity of the local communities to be able to also provide such kind of uh, equipment and machinery that they might need or various things that they might need uh, for their mining. So in conclusion, uh, we realized that um, before I get to the conclusion, I also just need to add that we, the communities cannot be fooled anymore. Uh, previously, the companies would just take advantage of 
the ignorance by the communities and their lack of knowledge. But now they are really aware of their, one, the rights that they are entitled to and how best to demand and also defend their rights, even in cases of violations, and how also to advocate for change, the change they want to see uh, within the uh, communities. I think we also all heard about the missing 15 billion within um, Marange or the diamond mining sector in Zimbabwe during the era of the president, uh, the former president Robert Mugabe. But communities, they are also trying to see how these leakages happened so that a country would lose about 15 billion, which is a lot, quite a lot. And if one is to visit Zimbabwe right now, Marange is one of the communities which is really uh, behind with regards to uh, development. Uh, it's even worse than the car, some of the districts where uh, there is no mining, and yet diamonds, they bring a, a lot of, uh, in terms of revenue generation. So now the communities, uh, we are also starting to do a show us the money campaign uh, during this year, which will also try to follow and track what is really happening to the revenues with uh, being um, generated from mining and um, how best this can be used uh, for their social service delivery. So in conclusion, we realize that uh, civil society organizations must not be a barrier to change. Why? Because mostly, especially with regards to information such as transparency, advocacy, uh, accountability, information, and everything, you find that CSOs are mainly on the four, uh, I mean, running with such issues and also um, doing more of advocacy work leaving out the communities who are mainly the people affected. So it is important that communities must be empowered to demand the change they want to see and that they also um, demand this change and that their voices be heard. And uh, equipping uh, community-based organizations with skills to identify their information needs to make sources of information, extract and analyze data and using data to demand change. So this is one way that can be used to make sure that these communities are equipped and empowered to be able to uh, engage the various authorities, even mining companies and um, government. And also social accountability platforms such as participatory budgeting and mining company engagement forum with communities presents opportunities to hold account government and mining companies to be accountable. Uh, thank you. <laughs>